Welcome to the Performance Code, the official podcast of PCodeNation.com and the Performance Code community. Tune in each week as top performers and fitness experts share their tactics and strategies to get you on the fast track to achieving maximum results. And now your host, Justin Scholard. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Justin Scholard, host of the Performance Code podcast, episode number 17, coming at you from sunny California. Today's a good day, guys. I'm in a good mood. I hope you are, too. Tuesday is when I'm recording this. Obviously, this this podcast goes out every Thursday. So today, I want to talk about squats, baby. There's just a lot of misunderstanding around squatting mechanics, squatting techniques. So what I'm going to do is just leave you with three simple tips to a better squat, right? I'm going to keep it very simple. There's a lot that goes into it. But we're going to talk about a couple of key things that um, will make you a much better squatter. Not only is it going to improve your performance, but it's going to make sure that we steer clear of injury because squatting is a fantastic, wonderful exercise if you do it right. If you do it wrong, yeah, it can it can be a little dangerous. You can get yourself hurt. I know that I've definitely tweaked my back and my hips from squatting incorrectly, mind you. But once I cleaned all that up and once I got smart on movement mechanics and the proper way to do it, I have not been hurt since. So I want to pass that information along to you. So last week we talked about the bracing sequence and how to avoid injury by squeezing your abs, squeezing your glutes before every movement, right? And we talked about shoulder mobility and hip mobility and all that stuff is super important. So I just want to take that a step further And I want to talk about now how do we apply that to a very practical, popular, functional movement such as the squat. If you have done my free strength course, my free lean muscle course at pcodenation.com, then you know in our sample week, one of the first things we do is squatting. And if you are a member of my academy, which you can also find at uh, pcodenation.com, it's a 12-week progressive overload strength and conditioning, um, a ca- uh, fitness program, all delivered through an app, video demonstrations, written instructions. It basically takes you through like a three-week progressive overload. Uh, then the fourth week is like a deload week. And then the fifth week starts another th- three-week progressive overload with all new exercises and rep ranges. The fourth week is another deload week. And then the f- ninth week starts a brand new three-week progressive overload cycle all culminating with the 12th and final week being the, another deload week for maximum results. I've had a couple dozen people go through it so far, and everyone's gotten really, really great results. You can actually see their before and afters if you just go to pcodenation.com um, and just check it out. Just peruse the site, see for yourself. So if you are a member or if you're thinking about becoming a member, uh, you'll you, what you're going to find is that we do a fair amount of squatting We don't overdo it. It's all in proportion to every other movement that we bring around. But squatting is powerful stuff, man. I mean, when you do it correctly and you brace yourself and you have the right load, it can really set the the tone for your fitness program in, in, as a whole, and then also dial in the kind of results you're seeing in particular. So let's just go over some of the basic squatting techniques that I would coach you if you were my personal client, if you were a member of the gym, we'd be barking this at you at almost every class. So number one, guys, as we talked about last week, we're going to always do the bracing sequence before we start any movement that goes for anything, right? Whether we're doing a bench press or a deadlift or a squat or an overhead press, especially, we're always going to brace our core, right? So in this instance, we're going to talk about the squat. How do we brace our core? Well, if you're familiar with Kelly Starrett and Mobility Wad, um, he talks about this in his book, The Supple Leopard. And so essentially what you're going to do is you're just going to take a big deep breath in. You're going to fill your chest cavity with air. You're going to squeeze those abs nice and tight, and then you're going to squeeze your glutes. And what you're doing essentially is just taking the slack out of your chest cavity by breathing that breath of air in, and then you're just dialing it in. You're just locking in your lower spine by flexing your abs and squeezing your glutes. So now your back doesn't have to do the work anymore, right? Now we can just focus on using the hips in this instance because we're because we're going into a squat. Our abs are braced, they're on fire, they're lit up. Our glutes are active. So what we're not gonna do is then be more prone to push it into our knees if our glutes are relaxed. So since we've tightened our glutes already, 
we've activated our hips and we're more likely now to recruit those muscle fibers as we go into the lift. Okay, so let's just say we walk up to the barbell, we unrack it, we stand, we take a step away from the squat rack, we take a big deep breath in, we squeeze our abs, we squeeze our glutes. Now, we're going to look down at our feet and make sure they're in the right spot. So what we're going to do now is take a peek down and make sure that our feet are shoulder width apart. Now you can, for different load and stimulus and variation, you can go wider, you can go more narrow, but we're just going to talk about the basic stance today. So let's just take a look and make sure that our feet are below our shoulders, that our toes are out slightly. I wouldn't recommend going past a 15 degree uh, splay in our toes or our feet pointing out. The reason for that is because anything past 15, 20 degrees, now we're going to start to encourage an internal rotation of our knee, right? If, if our toes are super spread out, the arches of our feet are going to collapse in. And if our arches are collapsed in, then guess what? Our knees are going to start to buckle in. That's called having a valgus fault. Obviously, we don't want to do that, right? So, Toes just out slightly, just just enough that's comfortable. I like to go about 10 degrees. And now, once we've got our feet in the right stance, we're going to shift our weight to our heels. We're just going to go ahead and just subtly shift our weight back to our heels, right? Because again, our heels tend to have a stronger connection with our glutes, and our toes tend to have a stronger connection with our quadriceps. And in this particular movement, our quads are really just stabilizing we want our glutes to be the active muscle, to be the muscle that's flexing and extending the spine. So our quads are going to help us lower into the squat, but our glutes are going to help us drive out of that squat, right? So shifting our weight back to our heels, our stomach is still braced. We took that big deep, uh, deep breath in. Now we're going to initiate our hips first, right? So we're going to push our butt back first, but not in the sense that we're going to like poke our butt out and overarch our lower back. We're just going to push our butt with our abs braced to just get our hips behind our heels a little bit to shift that center of mass back. And now once we do that and we initiate our hips first, now we're going to drop into that squat. Now here's the thing, guys you're going to read some general articles and some general guidelines for squatting all over the internet that say, don't go all the way down. Make sure you go all the way down. Never squat below a parallel. Always squat below a parallel. The reality is, is the answer just depends. It just depends on your specific mobility. It depends on your experience level and how easily, let's be honest, how easily you can do that with a straight spine. If I'm looking at you and you're forcing yourself to get all the way down, hips below your knees, in other words, but your back is rounding, your pelvis is tucking under your body as you squat, it, it, it doesn't make sense, right? I just can't, in good consciousness, have you squat all the way down, especially with a barbell on your back. So we have to take everything into consideration and not just follow some general program, but like understand that if your mobility isn't there yet, then all you're asking for is an injury, right? It's a recipe for disaster. Now, you might be able to get away with it for a little while, but eventually it's going to catch up with you, right? Like you can't just do improper movements under load indefinitely and, and suffer no consequences, right? So what I would have you do is find, we'll get like a box down and we'll find a level in a box that you can lower your hips to while maintaining a flat back so that maybe that's just half. Maybe that's just halfway down for you right now. Maybe you're super mobile and that's all the way down. Great, great for you. Awesome, knock yourself out. However, if that isn't you and you notice that you're having a really, really hard time keeping your back flat, then we need to just be honest with ourselves. Find the level that we can lower ourselves to effectively and efficiently and safely and just work that level until we've mastered it. Then maybe go, an inch lower. What I'll do with some of my clients, some of my, mem my members, is I'll take like a 12 inch stool and then I'll stack six, seven, eight, nine, um, 10 pound plates on that stool. So each plate's about an inch thick, right? And so if I got an extra nine or 10 inches of plates on top of the stool, let's just say that that's the point to where my client or the member of the gym can lower themselves down to effectively, then we'll just work that until they've nailed it and then I'll peel one 10 pound plate away, making it so they can lower themselves one inch lower. And then once they've hit that range of motion 
without a hitch. Their pelvis is in a neutral spot. Their back is flat. Their knees are open. We'll pull one more plate out. And we'll just keep doing that until they can eventually get themselves all the way down to the 12 inch stool and therefore have that full range of motion squat, right? So that's a really easy tip and trick for you to incorporate into your routine. But most importantly, just check your ego at the door. Just who gives a shit, right? Like if you're only squatting uh, just a little above parallel because you can do it with your back flat, then great. You know what? Because you're still going to create a stimulus. You're still creating an adaptational response and you're working your limits efficiently. But most importantly, you're just doing it smart and you're, you're avoiding injury. Now, don't stay there forever, right? Once you've reached that point to where you feel confident, go ahead and take it an inch lower. And then maybe two weeks later, you go an inch lower than that. And then a week lower, you go an inch lower than that. And within the course of a month or two, you're getting yourself to a full range of motion. And you're doing it properly and effectively. And most importantly, you're doing it safely. Okay, guys, so that's it. Let's just go ahead and do a quick recap of our squat technique. So we're going to go we brace, inhale, abs tight, glutes tight, right? We get our stance in the right spot, feet shoulder width apart, toes pointed out ever so slightly. We initiate the movement with our hips going backwards first, and then we're going to lower ourselves down to whatever point we can maintain a nice straight spine, abs being tight, knees open, right? So we want to make sure that our knees aren't buckling in. If you note, if you look down and you see that your knees are on the insides of your feet, meaning that if you were to drop a plumb line from your knee, and that line would go to the inside of your foot. That means your knees are, too, are buckling in. So we need to make a conscious effort to actively rotate those knees out. When you, when you look down, your knees should be wider than your feet. And the reason for that is it's external rotation, right? We don't Any, any internal rotation is a sign of some weakness. Maybe there's compensation happening in the joint. So we want to make sure that we're staying super active with this movement. We're activating our glutes and driving our knees open, creating torque and creating external rotation in our hip joints and our knee joints so we can effectively drive that weight out of the hole, out of the bottom of that squat, right? So you're going to look down. You're going to make sure that your knees are open to the outside of your feet. You're going to hit your range of motion that you can reach safely. And then as you come up, you're not going to let your head snap back. You're not going to overarch your spine. You're not going to let your knees buckle in. Those are all movement faults. Those are all tension strategies that to divert the tension out of your core. You're going to stay with it. You're going to let the alarm bells signal. You're going to keep your position. You're just going to drive out of there with everything you got. All right, guys, I hope that helps. This is a short episode. So if you need to go back and re-listen to it to understand a little bit better, I definitely recommend doing that. But I also have a bonus for you guys. If you go over to Performance Code YouTube channel, and I'll link this in the show notes, guys, I have an accompanying video where it's about four minutes long, where I, it's just me describing the squat in a little bit more detail and it's visual. So hopefully that might add something to it for you, add a little more value to you. Okay, guys. So that's it for today. Remember, hop into that free strength course, guys, pcodenation.com. It's right there on the homepage. You can read the first chapter of my book while you're there. And then if you want to take it a step further and really dial it in, really get those results that you're looking for, hop into my academy. It's 12 weeks. You got nothing to lose. It's everything you need to really take to the next level. Talk to you guys next week. Next week, I have a member of my gym who I've been hired as a coach, Brandon Sunwall. He's going to be on the episode. He's come a long way. He's a strong dude and he cleaned his mobility up and he got his movements uh, really dialed in and has now come back even stronger and better than ever. So it's going to be a really great conversation about his journey as a college athlete, high school athlete to now where he's under, he's in the top 100 as far as the the men's ranking in Southern California for CrossFit. So he's definitely an interesting person with a great perspective. So tune in next week for that episode. And until then, guys, I'll talk to you later. Thank you for listening. Thanks so much for listening to The Performance Code, the official podcast of PeakCodeNation.com with your host, Justin Scholar, online at PeakCodeNation.com. We'll catch you next time.